Marie-Thérèse, thank you very much for the invitation. And I'm going to talk now about uh, one specific case that has recently happened. And I will talk about challenges of rebuilding heritage sites in Nepal after the recent earthquake. And as you all have heard, on the 25th of April, as well as on the 12th of May, we've had two major earthquakes, 7.8 and 7.4 in Nepal. And in fact, um, 60 temple sites all over Nepal have been completely destroyed and over 200 sites have been partially destroyed. And we will have a big challenge in rebuilding these sites. And I'm going to show you in the beginning the World Heritage sites and their destruction in the Kathmandu Valley. As you remember, 1979, seven sites have been inscribed um, as uh, World Heritage sites from Kathmandu. And um, all of these sites have been uh, very severely damaged, uh, only Boda and uh, Svayambu partially damaged. And this is uh, Bhaktapur, Durba Square, how it used to look like before. You see still the Vatsala temple in... Upsala, I think this doesn't... This is the Vatsala temple. And you see how the Vatsala temple looks now. And in fact, in the back you have the Chatsindega and you have the Durga temple here. The Durba square of Bhaktapur was the least destroyed of the three Darba squares in, Kat in Kathmandu Valley because most of the sites there at the Darba square had been restored before. The Chasin Deval was completely rebuilt and the this, uh, this is again a view of the Vatsala temple, which was a stone building. And in fact, um, here the, German, uh, the Germans who had been uh, involved in the reconstruction of Bhaktapur and in the, uh, in the support of Bhaktapur up to the 80s, with the help of GIZ, GTZ in those days, um, they have already announced that they are going to help Bhaktapur municipality to rebuild this destroyed heritage. And uh, parts of these fragments of the Vatsala temple have been placed into the 55 window palace in order to know later when we are starting with the rebuilding um, to which temple sites all these frag fragments are belonging to. This was one of the activities that started immediately after the earthquake has happened. UNESCO office was very helpful in that regard because a representative has offered to, uh, give, a, um, to give a space for those people who are involved in heritage safeguarding and we formed groups and teams over there in order to look at the different heritage sites and collect and document whatever was, uh, was left. And so here in Bhaktapur we started to bring all these fragments of the Vatsala temple to this 55 window palace which is a very important uh, activity in regard of how to sustainably later on rebuild the heritage of these sites. And as you will see now, some of the uh, sites which I'm going to show you, it was really majorly damaged. Um, here the Durba Gate in Bhaktapur is now not existing anymore. This was after the first earthquake. And um, here, this is a site, uh, this is a view of the 55 Window Palace, which was very successfully um, um, uh, supported and uh, uh, restored in the past uh, seven years by the Bhaktapur municipality architects from the heritage section, which, uh, and in fact, they were accused by foreign architects who are partly involved in the Kathmandu Valley uh, to uh, rebuild heritage sites and to restore heritage sites. Those Bhaktapur architects were accused partly that they would not uh, reinforce structures strongly enough and that this building, in case of an earthquake, wouldn't survive. Actually, this was one of the few buildings which completely survives. There's not even a crack inside. The Bhaktapurian architects they have reinforced the uh, the old wooden struts and wood, wooden beams and they had reinforced 
corners they had reinforced by while using new bricks at certain places but they had tried to uh, to use as much of the old material as possible and mix it with new materials and the 55 window palace has completely uh, um, uh, has has no cracks at all and has survived this uh, these two earthquakes in 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 front you see the Chasin Dega temple which was completely rebuilt around 15 years ago by foreign architects by Götz Müller and Niels Gutschow. And again, there was a big outcry, partly from UNESCO, that they used um, a steel construction that they incorporated in this building in regard of an earthquake. And uh, so you see two examples at the Dorba Square in Bhaktapur that survived the earthquake. And here you get some of the examples of Lampati Satal and other Satals around the Bhaktapur Dorba Square where we have to rethink now in which way to rebuild. Actually, the fragments were all collected. And this is after uh, after uh, one month, uh, at least all the bricks have been collected now. And those ones that can be reused will. This is the Fasi Dega temple, which is also destroyed. And again, this was Fasi Dega before. And by the way, this used to be a three-story temple before 1934, when another earthquake, uh, and in Nepal we say every 80 years we will have bigger earthquakes. So the last big earthquake was in 1934 and this Fasi Dega temple had been destroyed and only the pedestrian survived and later on this little temple site was erected which is now also completely destroyed. So one has to think now with the Department of Archaeology in which way this has to be rebuilt if the original temple or this kind of temple should be rebuilt. And then we have another outlook to the uh, Taumadi Square, which is also on the World Heritage List, uh, together with Bhaktapur. And you see here a private building that has been completely destroyed. This was the Bishwana Temple, the, the temple of the uh, craftsman, which was completely destroyed. This is the the rubble of the Bishwana temple, the painters who are living in the back in these houses, they had, uh, with their community initiative, collected all the fragments of the Bishwana temple and kept them. The painters who used to live in these houses can't live in those houses anymore. They live in front of that in makeshift tents now. And that will take on another couple of months, in fact, because the monsoon just recently had uh, started and there was no time in order to, uh, to help them to rebuild or reconstruct something in their old houses. And the houses that I've shown you before, they are not inhabitable at all anymore, even though they might look as if you could inhabit them. And this is what happened in Bhaktapur um, uh, in general. Here is the pottery place, and you see again the community mainly lives in tents and makeshift places around the pottery place. And their living heritage, uh, and their actually the tangible heritage, the knowledge about how to make pottery, uh, will get lost in future if they don't get their places to uh, back again where they used to work and did the pottery and uh, in this regard we have to make considerations as well where to start first and in which way to start first unfortunately in Nepal as you might heard many um, many young and middle-aged people migrate to the Middle East and in fact uh, this is a problem because we will not have enough skilled workers in reconstructing and rebuilding the heritage sites in Nepal and um, showing you just one of the Actually, it was the first building, the Pujari Mat, which was restored by Niels Gutscho and three other architects in 71. That building has three courtyards, and in those days, 71, Niels and uh, his team, partly Bhaktapurian architects, uh, they had uh, restored two of the courtyards. The third one was in a good condition, but now the third courtyard had partly collapsed with the peacock window, which is very famous in, in, in Bhaktapur. Now, just very short, the private buildings in Bhaktapur who are uh, to 60% destroyed. And here we are talking, and we means the Department of Archaeology with whom Himal Asia is very closely working together, and of course UNESCO, and uh, we are talking with the National Planning Commission because uh, the person um, regarding um, 
um, Safeguarding Culture has a program which is supported by UN organizations in order to help to rebuild these private houses. And most of the people from those private houses have to live nowadays in those schools that are still surviving in makeshift places or under these satals in Bhaktapur. Another view to Patan, in Patan at the Durba Square, three temple sites have been completely destroyed due to the fact that a lot of people from the communities who are living there, um, it was possible in the first week to uh, to rescue and to safeguard a lot of the fragments of temple sites here, for example, from the Charnarain temple. And it were mainly the young people and the army who helped together with the communities. This is the Radha Krishna temple. It's not on the World Heritage site, but next and close to the Darba Square. This is how it used to look like before, and this is when it was completely into debris and rubble. And again, the army and the young people were the ones involved. Another look to the Darba Square of Kathmandu, which was very badly destroyed, actually the worst destroyed of all the three Darba Squares. You see that excavators were starting to uh, to, to work over there, and this was another threat because we were not sure if fragments have been destroyed during that time. So again, the army was informed from, from the department as well, from Himal Asia, in order to help to take out fragments and elements which belong to different temple sites to safeguard them at those houses which were still uh, usable. And here the Hanumandoka uh, Palace with Lalit, uh, Lalit Purbavan and Basantapur, which are now even more destroyed after the second earthquake. And this is uh, the Digu, uh, Digu uh, um, uh, Char uh, temple and the Narain temple at the Hanuman Dukkha uh, Darba Square area, which is completely destroyed and only the two pedestrians have survived the earthquake. People who lived in that area have to stay like that now. And uh, this is now Kashtamandapa Nazadio temple and Kabindrapur temple. The Kashtamandapa has um, has been destroyed to rubbles. 200 people died under this temple who were there for donation blood uh, campaign at that time. And here you see our World Heritage sign and you see the rubble behind and we really hope that this can be rebuilt slowly but steadily after the monsoon since in those areas up to the monsoon time, because of the initiatives of local people and with the help of the Department of Archaeology and UNESCO and uh, private organizations like Himal Asia, we were able to rescue most of the fragments that were lying around over there. Now taking a look to Swayambu, you see that the uh, Swayambu temple itself has only certain cracks, but all the over 40 houses around Swayambu are completely destroyed. And here again, um, people from the community started to um, to safeguard the little Chaitya stupas, the Litchavi stupas from the time between the 9th and the 9th century and the 18th century. And in fact, um, they even started to, to document it by themselves, the communities and young people who all were coming together in the initiative that Christian Manhart from UNESCO started in uh, directly after the earthquake when his staff came back to the office. Um, uh, the Nepal Heritage in Crisis Group, whoever was able to do something, came in order to rebuild and help to rebuild and document. And here are some of those people who helped the communities to get those fragments uh, and um, uh, put them into safeguarding. Another look at Chango Narain Temple, which was partly destroyed. Fortunately, the temple is still standing, but you see the huge cracks over there, and it will be a, a challenge, and is a challenge in the in uh, in the moment, to uh, safeguard uh, to, to initiate a, an emergency safeguarding of this temple. And the interesting thing is that a lot of different organizations would like to take over the uh, the. Um, safeguarding of this temple and it seems there are difficulties who is taking it over and so far they haven't started yet even though it would have been necessary. The surrounding buildings uh, where a museum was housed are completely destroyed and again with the help of the army um, which um, um, the local people informed us and we informed the army to come over in order to help against looting and here you see us working and trying to take out the rubble and uh, the fragments from the rubble. Yeah. <laughs>
uh, also 40% um, of Changunarain uh, village was destroyed. Another look now at Bunga Mati, which is on the tentative heritage list. This is Ratu Machenranat, and this is how it looks today. And in fact, uh, this area is not even 60% destroyed, but over 80%, and the people um, are trying to slowly regain strength and energy in order to start with something at least. And the Kathmandu University was involved over here to help in different groups with different peoples, first of all to, of course, settle um, places where they had makeshift tents and then, of course, to, to help them to have enough food and um, uh, to, uh, to have sanitation places and then also to have uh, places where, where the kids were, were taken into, into safeguarding because they were under traumas. And um, you see how they are staying nowadays here. This is Kokana, also placed on the tentative list and uh, with the same problems. Here we make a big jump into a completely different culture with a very important vernacular architecture, Lomantang. And people over there were badly, their, their houses and their heritage sites were badly destroyed. But this is something which people in the West didn't realize too much because actually the uh, most of, uh, I mean, nobody was killed over there, fortunately, but as I said, many heritage places were destroyed. Like, for example, the palace in the back is full of cracks, and the people here in front, when we came over there after the second earthquake, were just... Um, um, uh, um, carrying out a ceremony to protect uh, Lomantang. And you see the Darba Square here with a lot of cracks and it looks inside, com it's devastated inside, uh, it's, it's completely in uninhabitable inside and the Raja of Mustang lives in tents outside. Here are some other places. Uh, from Geling, and uh, in fact, Geling is another place which is completely destroyed, and you get some ideas here how this vernacular heritage looks alike. We are in the moment thinking of uh, having uh, UN Habitat and Himal Asia joint activity in order to rebuild these villages, and here are some... Uh, some uh, pictures of uh, what could be possibly used, like these uh, compressed brick earth technique, with what we would like to, uh, with what we would like to uh, reconstruct those vernacular heritage sites. And probably with this picture, I would like to end my presentation. And thank you very much. So, just that you got an idea in which way the reconstruction of Kathmandu and of Nepal might happen in future. Thank you so much.